Today's guest is John Levesque. He's the lead product evangelist for DocuSign, but also he's a YouTuber, a photographer, a speaker, a conference host, and a power platform guru who was the founder of hashtag FlowFam. If you're familiar with it, if you're not, you should check it out on Twitter, the bots, the bot squad. And then really uh, the, the awesome t-shirt and stickers that he put out that were less code, more power. He kind of put that on the map. I'm a fan, bought, bought those to wear around and, and put on my laptop. John, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me, Jeremy. What a great intro. And I just have to say thank you. You got my name right. I appreciate that. I know it's a tough one. So thank you. I won't. I, 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 I looked on YouTube and listened to you. So I've heard you. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. Use yeah. all the tools at our disposal to make sure we do it right. Totally. So share a bit about yourself. What's your background, uh, where you're from, who you are and what you do? Yeah, so currently I live in a town called Lake Stevens, Washington. It's about 40 miles north of Seattle. I've been here in Washington for about 19 years now, which is crazy. Uh, the other 19 years of my life, I was from Connecticut. I was born and raised there. Uh, and and actually, I moved out here when I was 19. And so now I've been here for 19, which is pretty crazy that um, as much of my life. Yeah. So I uh, grew up in Connecticut. I uh, had a, quite a, a tough upbringing. Um, you know, my family was rather poor. We moved around a lot because we were super poor. My parents were always getting evicted and, and having to move in with my grandparents. And so that meant uh, quite a, a disruptive upbringing for myself, uh, which also kind of meant I wasn't a great student because like I was always on the move and there was never attention put to that. And uh, as you can imagine, my, my parents, um, they, they really didn't make me care that a whole lot about school. So uh, kind of an unorthodox background. I, I never went to college. Uh, I, I did barely finish high school. Um, and, and so education has never been a huge thing for me. Um, all of, of what I've been able to accomplish has been through experience and, and through making the most out of opportunities. And um, and so, yeah, so, so grew up there, came out here when I was 19 for a girl. That was what brought me to Washington. That didn't work out, um, but being in Washington did. And so I, I think I'll never leave here. It's the most beautiful place. Uh, I've had a great opportunity to do some cool work here. I've worked for Microsoft and done a whole bunch of work for them. I, I think I was there for uh, about eight years in total. Uh, worked on four different products for them. And now, now I'm at DocuSign and lead product evangelist over there and having a ton of fun. It's It's been a very, very cool transition to kind of go from the very fast paced hustle and bustle of Microsoft to now come to DocuSign and feel a much different pace, a much calmer, more reserved pace where it seems like not everyone is going a thousand miles an hour, which um, as I get older, I'm appreciating a little bit. Sure. And for those who don't know what DocuSign is, just say quickly, what, what is the company do? Yeah, so DocuSign is most well known for e-signature. So it's basically a contract goes into a digital form. There are fields that you can fill out. There are initial places that you tap to say, I agree to this page. And then you would sign digitally. That information is then transferred back to the person who sent it. You both get a nice copy of it. And so in its simplest form, it's, it's digital signature, e-signature. Uh, but there's actually a whole suite of tools that people don't know about. There's uh, CLM, which is kind of an orchestration tool. Mm -hmm. There is Gen, which is document generation. There's payments. You can take payments along with a the contract. There's a whole suite of other things as well, too, which I didn't even know about before I started. And now I'm getting exposed to. Interesting. Yeah, I did not know about the other products. I was familiar with the e-signature product, which you're right. That's kind of the flagship. You know, DocuSign goes along yep. with the name. Um, and they're always at the conferences. So interesting. I'll have to check out some of those other products. So, so yeah, what brought got, you into the IT field? I mean, we know what brought you to Washington. What brought you into, into that first role in IT? Uh, so do I do IT right now? You do, right? You're, you're, you're working for a product company. Company has to produce code. Has code yeah, has to yeah. be sold. Somebody's got to buy it. And somebody has to help make sure people know about it. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. So I, I would say, uh, it's funny, because if you ask me, I wouldn't say I was in IT, but I have been in IT. And uh, what brought me into it was um, just a, a natural interest. I, as a kid, I wasn't good in school, but I was always really good at like taking things apart and putting them back together. I had a very logical mind and how things were, were uh, assembled. Um, and so I actually got started in technology on PlayStation 2s and Xboxes. 
Uh, I would go on Craigslist, which was a very popular website at the time. We have OfferUp and eBay and all kinds of things now. If you're a little older, you probably remember Craigslist. It's this very shady website where you could buy things from people. It's still uh, very it, shady. <laughs> it's, it's even more shady now. I don't think anybody actually goes there. You should probably avoid it. But on Craigslist, I would pick up broken Xboxes and broken Playstations. And I would then take all of those pieces, you know, probably three, four, five broken ones, and I create one good one. Wow. And then I give it to my friend so we could like play games and stuff. And, and I just, that was how I got an interest. And that led to computers. And so I went down to the local computer shop and I started just hanging out there, like being a pain to the owner. Um, and, and he eventually just started like giving me work to do like, Hey, you know, do this thing. And he'd teach me how to do a virus removal or install a Ram stick or do a cleanup or, you know, whatever it was just little by little, he kind of spoon fed it to me. And then I just kind of started working there uh, a little bit. Um, and, and so that kind of started all the interest in tech and the interest in IT. And then I moved to Washington and uh, I got a cool opportunity to go and do a very interesting job, which I have a crazy story about. Um, I, I was, I, I got hired for Microsoft and the job was to travel around and to set up the speaking rooms for Steve Ballmer. So like, <laughs> So I would like, you know, put put technology in place and put right. podiums up and run the lines and do the audio and make sure that the room was set up so he could travel around and do talks about Microsoft. Um, and that really, I think, was the point that kind of solidified for me that I wanted to be involved in technology. And and so that was a, a very cool thing where uh, I'll, I'll make a very long story short. Um, I had a boss at that job who was not a nice guy. He treated me pretty poorly. And later in life, funny enough, I got on the Microsoft speaking tour and I would travel around and give talks and, and oftentimes keynotes and large events, like, you know, large talks at Ignite. And funny enough, one day at Ignite, when I had a room of about 5,000 people, was interesting who walked up onto my stage to prep me. <laughs> it was that old boss. And he was still doing that old job. And he was still doing that same job and he couldn't believe his eyes. And it was great. You know what I did? I made him run and get me batteries. And then he came back and I made him run and get me a water. And he came right. back and I made him run and get me a clicker. Just, just, you know, a little, a little bit of, of like, yeah, oh, that's right. right. So, a bit, so nothing it was painful. Nothing painful, but just to, just to like, Hey, I remember you, you know? That's amazing. That's hilarious. Uh, I could I could imagine the power I would have if something like that happened to me. It, it was just one of those moments, right, where it was like, wow, karma loves me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, so now in, in the IT field, you're, you're most well known for, I think, building community, right? That, that's what you're doing for, for DocuSign now. That's what you did for a long time for Microsoft. How, how does that job work? I mean, I, why, how does somebody even get hired for what does that job look like? Yeah. Um, so I think when it started out, it was uh, I was hired as community manager. And, and so if anyone is looking to kind of follow this path, I always recommend that's probably a good place to start. It's going to expose you to community workings. It's not a great job, right? It's moderation. It's a lot of conversation. It's a lot of dealing with unhappy people. It's moving posts. It's it's not glorious work. But if you can find systems to, to finish that work quickly, you have opportunities then to have different levels of conversation with the community. You can create different engagement programs. You can create different information programs. You can scale out what you're doing by offering them incentive on, on spreading the message like you're spreading the message. And, and so community, uh, it started out as, as community management and, and it morphed into what I would say now is evangelist, right? The title is now evangelist. And, and what is evangelist? Don't bother going and looking it up. It gets really churchy really fast. I always say evangelism is those who know telling those who don't. Mm -hmm. And if you just keep it simple like that, it's a very simple, it's, it's an easy thing to understand that way. And then community, right, is this idea of us moving together towards a common goal, us helping each other, us learning together, us identifying with each other, and us being a collective that is involved in a similar idea or topic. And so the day-to-day -day job is like, it varies all the time. Sometimes it's creating events. A lot of times it's creating content. A lot of times it's it's having 
conversations with unhappy customers or helping the sales team close a deal because maybe I have some information or a story from another customer because I'm constantly interfacing with them and talking with them that they might not have. And so it's a very varied position. The, the things you do are, are really wide. And, and I think that's why I love it. Um, it it's, a, it's a really ever-changing thing and it requires kind of being a, a jack of all trades. I would say I'm, I'm good at a lot of things. I'm a master of none, but I can do a lot of things pretty well. Wow. So, and you've been in this career now, you said 19, 19 years since you moved to, uh, to Washington and yep. some level of IT uh, interaction. Or, or, you know, so I have the time lines, timelines a little split there. When I moved to Washington, I was 19. It was probably five or six years later. I think it was 24 or 25 uh, when I got involved in, in technology in a major way, in a professional way. Up until that point, it had really just been a hobby and something I did on the side. And, and, and I mean, I guess if, if we consider working at the computer shop at 19, <laughs> IT. Then I guess I did some back Maybe. then. Too. I'm sure there were some customers. The same things, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Why is there a scratch across my motherboard right here? Um, those sorts of. Hey, I I stepped on my computer. Can you make it work again? That's <laughs> right, right. Can't you just solder that? <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't have one of those screens laying around for this very specific model. You can't fix it today. Right. Yeah. Well, so you've been you've been around the block. What's yeah. something that you've seen uh, that we do that you would go, wow, we should rethink that. And it could be all kinds of things, right? Uh, yeah. What, what if yeah. Some, what's something you've seen that you would go, if somebody came to you and said, John, today we're giving you the decision authority, you're president for the day or king for the day. What's something you might say, hey, here's something we should consider doing differently. I would strike a degree requirement from every job description. I think... Um, Equivalent experience is just as good, if not better. Uh, I don't don't get me wrong. I don't have anything against the college education. I don't have anything against anyone who got a college education. I think that there's there's a wonderful path there, and and it is the tried and true route of finding success in life. Right, get an education, find a better job, make more money. Now, I just think as someone who did not take that path, mm -hmm. um, it was probably harder than it should have been for me to make that jump. And, and I am tenacious and I was able to scrape and claw and make it happen because I really wanted it. I don't know if every person is built how I am built. I don't know if every person has that in them. And so I think that instead of expecting everyone to do what I did, I think it's much better if we set the expectation a bit differently. Um, me not having a college degree doesn't change my effectiveness, doesn't change my experience, doesn't change all of the programs that I've created. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we over-index sometimes on this education factor where I think, you know, I've seen it a lot of times. I've been not considered for a lot of roles that I was very qualified for because I didn't have that piece of paper. And I was told it by people like, oh, you don't have a degree. I think it's changing now. You know, I think it is getting better already. But I think if, if I could just, you know, make one rule tomorrow, like not allowed, no degree requirements. And if you do put a degree requirement, it's preferred and it has to have an equivalent experience marker to it. Something like that, I think, would, would, would open things up where people could maybe see themselves in those possibilities a bit more. I know for me, for a long time when I didn't have the degree, it was just like, oh, OK, well, I, I can't have that job. They're going to expect me to have a degree. And, uh, and it was a big like thing that stopped me. Only once I decided that, that it wasn't going to be a thing that slowed me down, was I able to then overcome it and, and just through an, an indomitable spirit and, and saying, I'm just going to go and get it, right? I, had, I probably had to try a little harder, but I think overall, it would be a great change if we could remove that and give people an easier on-ramp, I think. Mm, I, I agree. I, I'm actually somebody who, much like you, who came without an IT, without a, a college degree, eventually got it on my own just because I nice. did, but I didn't need it by that point, right? It, by then I'd already got that experience piece of what you're saying. I, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah. And I, I think I heard my daughter shout, yay, you know, she liked that idea. But she's graduating <laughs> high school and that's what she's hoping. She doesn't want to go to college. She wants to go straight into an IT career. So. And, and you know what? I think, um, I mean, having seen your daughter now like speak a, a couple of times and, and seeing her pop up all over the place like i bet she has a, i think she has a good chance i mean it, not to not to if you're pushing her towards college i would never want to tell her not to do that but i think 
Um, I think that we live in a world now where showing what you've got mm -hmm. can be just as good, right? By building those epic things and having them as part of your portfolio, that can, that can be your degree. That should be your degree, right? The, the lived experience of, look at what I built is just as good as I studied this for four years in a book, in, in my mind, at least. Sure. I agree completely. So where are, you, where are you headed, John? What's next for you? Where do you see yourself going, you know, in the near future or even the, the, the medium future? Oh, man. Um, so just landed here at DocuSign, having a lot of fun here. I think I'd love to up level and kind of become head of, of admin advocacy and just grow a team of developer advocates. Uh, I think that our uh, admin advocates, sorry, I think that would be an epic, awesome position to be in something very fun. But I think personally, um, I have a few personal goals outside of work as well. Um, I do the YouTube thing and now I started TikTok uh, because I want to have a TV show. I want to actually be a host. You know, I love being an MC. I love hosting. I love interaction with people. I love things like this. Uh, I want to be a host of a TV show. And so one of my goals in the future, and hopefully you'll see me there because I, I try to never, ever give up on a goal. Um, is is to have I want to be like like Jimmy Kimmel or Ryan Seacrest or or any of those guys. I want to be a personality that has a show that talks about things that are interesting and and I want it to be technology focused. And so I really have an interest in emerging tech, like looking at like the the um, like jetpacks and electric cars and nanotechnology and implants and all this crazy stuff that's happening around the world that we don't really talk about. I'd love to start a show that really focuses on that emerging tech and, and, and all of it, where it lives in context and its effect on the world and all that. It's a, it's a dream of mine. Wow. That's a great dream. I, and I hope you make it a reality. I would watch that show. Yes. Thank I'll you. Watch the Thank heck you. out of that show because I'm interested in those same things. Uh, that's, that's interesting. Wow. Well, John, I want to thank you so much for, for being willing to come on the podcast today. It's been an excellent conversation. It's good to connect with you again. And I look forward to talking with you in the future. Man, Jeremy, thank you so much for having me. It's been a great conversation. I love getting to, to share the story. And it's been a while since I had a great conversation like this. So thank you, man.